Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Chanel Taro bringing you the SDL Season 6 Week 2 Battle vs. Coach Kurt and the Adelaide Apsles. Coming into Week 2, we did pick up our nice win last week against Purple and the Kohana Hydreigons. In case you haven't seen that, make sure to go check it out. It's a very close match. Now, as for this week, we are taking on Lando Eye and a very scary Sand team, as well as Kieran Black on top of that. Um, Kurt is a very solid battler and he drafted a very offensive team that's pretty scary. Gonna throw it up there to the right. As you see, Landorus Incarnate, Kieran Black, Exedril, Tyranitar, Sylveon, Reuniclus, Jellicent, Chestnut, and Dunsparce. As for his team, when I was looking at the uh, matchup, uh, Lando's scary because he could just bring the Sheer Force, which I was expecting. I was expecting like a Sheer Force with Gravity. Gravity for sure, because it allows him to take on Celesteela as well as Exedril. And then um, he could have also brought in a Sand Force set to go with the Sand, which is um, smart for his team. Like the overall build, he can go on um, the Special off attacking Sheer Force, or he can go Physical attacking um, Sand Force and just do ridiculous damage. It's very hard to prep for defensively. Near about impossible. Next up, Kieran Black. If he was bringing Kieran Black, I was expecting either a Scarf set in order to take on a Gar uh, Garchomp, because his speed tiers are garbage. His fastest Pokemon is Landers at 101. Um, the only thing that I could counter Garchomp... Um, without a Scarfer is Exedril and Sand. So I was definitely expecting Scarf or a bulky Z user in order to um, blow back Celesteela with um, the Electric Z with Fusion Bolt. Next up, Exedril, I was just expecting stereotypical Sand, nothing more, nothing less. Um, Tyranitar, I was kind of expecting a AV or a somewhat bulky Pursuit Trap set. Um, Stealth Rock lead if he was an AV, so. And then Sylveon, I was expecting a um, just a defensive set. If he decided to bring it, I don't really know what it was going to do this match. A decent amount of my team can deal with it. Um, it really only helps first Halucha, but in the end, he had a better check to Halucha and Reuniclus. So next up is Jellicent. Um, Jellicent, I was kind of expecting a um, defensively bulky but also fast um, taunt set in order to deal with my my Lodic. It also would just wall my Celesteela because I couldn't get Leaf Seeds off of it and whatnot. Could take decent hits from Lele and um, Zam, but Shadow Ball would be doing a lot to them. So, and then next up, Chestnut. If he was to bring it, it would probably be um, Max Defense with a. I don't know if you put a speed in this to um, try and wall Milotic because um, Chestnut can still take it on decently well, even though it might get Scald Burned. But if he was to bring it, I would just be expecting defensive, maybe spikes. Um, but in overall, I wasn't so sure if Chestnut was actually coming. Next up is Dunsparce, and I'm not even going to talk about Dunsparce, it's just a meme pick and I wasn't really expecting it to come, but he did in fact bring it, so that's cool. Um, makes it easier, less threats to actually worry about. As for my team build, um, starting from the left over here, we have Lele holding the Pixie Plate. This was um, max speed, max special attack, yes Hugo, it is 252, 252, I want to risk the speed tie on Kiram if I needed to and just do a lot of offensive damage. This had Moonblast, Psyshock, Focus Blast, and Taunt. Um, very similar set to last week versus Purple, where it was three attacks Taunt, but I need the Taunt because if it's a dual dance Reuniclus, oh, I didn't talk about Reuniclus. If I, <laughs> if I uh, had to face a dual dance Reuniclus, I definitely need a Taunt in order to deal with that because Lele could take it on otherwise. Because if he is dual dance, then he's most likely max um, defense, which um, with the Pixie Plate, Moonblast will two shot that Reuniclus. Unless it unfortunately gets up a call mine first. So, next up is Celesteela. This was the highlight to the team. This was just about. This was very defensive with just enough spadef to where a non-invested Reuniclus can never two shot me with thunder. Um, I had leftovers, of course, and the um, coverage was uh, Leech Seed to protect, heavy slam, and substitute. Yes, this team was just gonna, or this set was just to absolutely wall his team. He does not have that great of checks to um, Celesteela. It's basically a um, physically offensive Kieran Black, which I'm already running defensive for Exedril and stuff, so it's perfectly fine. I'm um, getting gravity up for Lando, which is like wasting a turn on Lando and getting damage on Lando. Or Thunder Reuniclus. He doesn't really have any other options. He could have brought some of his taunters to deal with it, but um, it's still a pain nonetheless. Basically, I could just sub up and get a lot of leech seeds and just wear down his team over time in order for some of my mods in the back to sweep. Next up, Garchomp. Like I mentioned, his only counter, like, straight up without any Scarf, is um, Exedril and Sand. Uh, so I have SD Garchomp with uh, Earthquake, Dragon Claw, and Poison Jab. Plus two Poison Jab will take out Sylveon. It will do around 75% to a defensive Chestnut, 
which isn't too much, but um, I didn't feel like Chestnut was coming, so I'd rather have Poison Jab in case Sylveon decided to come. Um, because I felt like the Sylveon had a little bit more viability this game than Chestnut. Um, Earthquake would absolutely just destroy his team, plus your Dragon Claw probably takes out Lando after... It does take out Lando after Rocks for sure, in case he did have a little bit of bulk. Um, would KO otherwise, I think, so... Next up is Pikachu. This is a fun set. Um, I had a Brick Break, Volt Tackle, Hidden Power Flying, Substitute. Basically, if he decided to lead Tyranitar, I planned on killing his Sand Setter turn 1. Because if he led Tyranitar, it was for sure his Rock Setter, and I would assume he would stay in. Brick Break had a um, good chance to kill, assuming he'd be um, not really Defense Infested Titar nor Choppleberry. I would expect um, either the Smooth Rock. <laughs> Took me a while. Um, Shaka, he could have been Chopple, but I wasn't really positive on that. Um, I, I was thinking Smooth Rock, Shaka, or, um, a Soul Vest. But, of course, he wouldn't be his lead if he was a Soul Vest, so. Either way, Pikachu, uh, had a, uh, 97% to 114 or something like that to, um, kill Tyranitar with Brick Break, which is very cool. We were max attack at him in Pikachu with the Light Ball, of course. Um, Hidden Power Flying did two-shot Chestnut, which is <laughs> still interesting. Um, Volt Tackle did a, just so much to Reuniclus, um, which is good because I need a chip on that. It also gave me another answer to Jellison since Jellison was a little annoying for this team. Um, and then Substitute was I could get it on the Tyranitar if he just didn't respect Pikachu and went for his rocks. Next up is Halucha. This absolutely destroyed his team unless he was max defensive Reuniclus. Um... I was max attack adamant, not sure how much speed. I had the Psychic Seed, of course. I had um, Swords Dance, Acrobatics, High Jump Kick, and Throw Chop. Throw Chop basically stopped Sylveon from hyper voicing me. I mean, Sylveon did have the option to use a Psy Shock in my Psychic Terrain, but it didn't necessarily want to click that for anything versus my team. So, hyper voice felt like it'd be fine for him to bring. And then. Basically, Throw Chop makes it so it cannot um, kill me with Hyper Voice, and then Acrobatics can kill Sylveon afterwards. Um, I would just need to get Chip on the Reuniclus if it was the Magic Guard not uh, regen set in order for Hollow to sweep. Next up is Serena. I was debating a long time whether to make this Choice Guard for Choice Ban, and last second I switched it to Choice Ban. Um, I have uh, Trop Kick, High Jump Kick, Rapid Spin, and U-Turn. I opted for um, Choice Band U-Turn just because it will do 50% to Reuniclus if he's max defense Calm on, so that's the uh, reason I decided for that. And I was really expecting like a Scarf Kieran Black if he were going to bring it. And um, even if I was Scarf um, Serena, I wasn't going to one-shot the Kieran Black. So there was really no point in me bringing Scarf, considering the main thing I would be able to one-shot with Scarf would be um, only the Exit Drill, because I'm already going to outspeed the T-Tar, knowing he's not going to be max speed. And stuff like that. So I just opted to go Choice Band because I could also live any hit from um, the Landorus, even the Sludge Wave, um, from a Life Orb offensive set. And then I could just get off a lot of damage if I wanted to. So, after all that, as we are going to close his roster and we are going to kick off the battle, um, I was uh, just going to lead my Pikachu, you know, go ahead and get in his head turn one. Pikachu was not meant to do much just to catch him off guard. And he does lead with his dunce bars. I need to turn off this music. Okay. Um, I went for Brick Break turn one. He goes for Stealth Rock. So I got the crit. Not, didn't matter too much. Um, I'm going to go for Brick Break again. Um, he shows he is not a leftovers Reuniclus, which is interesting. We go for Volt Tackle, and we get the para here. So this is actually pretty important. Um, considering he didn't get a leftovers, I felt like this was going to be actually important that I got that para because he's probably regen. So I get the SD up here, I go for Earthquake, this forces out to see if he is a Scarf Curum. Um, if he's not, he would go Tyranitar here immediately to get an Exadrill. I'm going to go right into Celesteel here, and take on his Ice Beam, as I will freely get up. Oh, I went for Protect to scout if he was Scarf to make sure, that's right. And then I go for Lead Seed here, knowing I can eat a Thunder, and um... Unfortunately, he misses the Thunder, so I do get a little Leech Seed back, and then now I will just go for the Substitute, in case he decides to stay in and click Thunder again. So I will go for the Leech Seed on the Slanderous as it goes for Gravity. Expecting him to stay in for some reason. <laughs> I clicked Protect, but of course he's going to Exadrill here. So I um, take this Earthquake because of the Gravity, and then 
shows his life orb, which is very important because um, I can just wear down this Exadrill just by being shenanigans. So he does a nice play here, goes for SD on my Protect. Um, so I'm forced to switch out here. <laughs> this was such a mistake. <laughs> I went, the reason I switched out Celesteela was because of gravity. And what did I do? I click Halucha immediately. I went so fast to click cancel, but it was too late. <laughs> I really wanted to go Serena there, but I, I derped so hard. Um, so we lost Halucha. I was really scared at this point, knowing that Reuniclus has Thunder. And then the Kira Black's offensive with, um, physically offensive based off the ice beam damage. So it can get, um, it's fusion bolt damage on Celesteela, but Celesteela can still do work. Because I do have that pair on the Reuniclus, and Thunder's only 7% accurate. So I go for the Leap Seed here, as he goes into Landorus. Um, I'm gonna go for the Heavy Slam, get off damage, make sure you can only get up gravity one more time versus my Celesteela. And I'm gonna click, click Leech Seed again here, knowing he's going to switch because he needs to keep that gravity. One, it boosts the accuracy of his Thunder. Two, it allows Exadrill as well as his own Lando to hit me with Earthquake. I will just go for Heavy Slam here and take out the Exadrill, and there is Celesteela's first kill. <laughs> as he goes into Kirim here, I am just going to protect and scout what he wants to go for. Um, but he decided to go into Reuniclus, which is perfectly fine. He goes for Thunder, showing he does have a little special offensive investment, considering my 12-1 um, special defense ensured that Thunder never 2 KO'd me. But he misses Thunder there, and I'm just going to Leap Seed, Protect, and be annoying. <laughs> so basically, he has to break through Para, and then he has to actually manage to land a Thunder just to break the sub, and then I can sub up again later on. So he is in a losing battle. He needs to get like crits with his other Pokemon and stuff like that, and comes Tyranitar on my Heavy Slam. Goes for Thunder Bunt, gets a crit to break my sub, don't know if it mattered, don't really care. Um, go for Heavy Slam, takes out Tyranitar, plus 2 defense, so now I absolutely wall Kirin Black um, with its Fusion Bolt, considering I do know it is um, Scarf at this point. Or still assuming. As I Protect, he gets Parrot, which is probably not the best because I didn't want to PB stall the Thunder. Um, so I go for Sub here, and I'm just going to span Sub until he gets either Parrot, which happens here, or he misses Thunder. He was in a losing battle, unfortunately. Um, I, I re I'm really only sorry for the um, para from Pikachu, because Volt Tackle is only a 10% para, just like Thunderbolt and stuff, so that's really unfortunate. But um, it's Thunder 70% accurate. I, I've ran it with Reuniclus and other things, and I just hate doing that. Like, I've had to run Iron Tail with Lucario before this gen when it got Meteor Mash, and it just sucks. But... So he's just got to work around, hope he gets a crit and stuff like that in order to break this Celesteela. He goes for the Fusion Bolts. He does a, a whopping 24. <laughs> and we're just going to get the Leech Seed as I can just stall him out easily here. Go for the Heavy Slam. Get more Leech Seed Recovery back. As I can go for the Protect here. On his Fusion Bolt, get Leech Seed and he will go down to Leech Seed next turn. So this is a free sub. For Celesteela. As we do get the little bit of Leech Seed back to kill the Kirin Black. For, so for Celesteela getting its third kill. And right here I'm just going to click Leech Seed. That's fair. And then as he goes into Reuniclus here. I was protecting in case Lando wanted to go for Earth Power. But I'm just going to go for Heavy Slam because I will two shot this Reun. But I want to make sure that um, Lando can't come in on Gravity. So I'm just going to protect for these turns. And then I'm going to set up a sub. Marine and Close does break them, so it's fine. But now I just click, get to click Heavy Slam and win the game with Celesteela. As we take out the Reuniclus, get the Beast Boost in defense again. And the Landorus comes out on 4%. Just gravity in case I choke for some reason, which is kind of impossible at this point. And I go for the Heavy Slam. So it was very unfortunate for Kurt that I did get that pair on Reuniclus. Um, it just really mattered about the amount of times that he could um, at least land Thunder because he did get um, paired two or three times. Um, basically, he just had to get um, Reuniclus in whenever gravity was up just so Thunder would hit more. Um, I think that was the only chance he had of really dealing with the Celesteela. But he tried a few times to try and land the Thunder out of gravity, and that just didn't work. Um, Celesteela did its job for sure. <laughs> it picked up five kills, which is ridiculous. Um, 
Once again, unfortunate for Kurt, but it's 70% accurate. It sucks. Reuniclus just needs Charge Beam. If it had Charge Beam, my Celesteel wouldn't have been able to do what it did this game. Um, it was still a good game to him nonetheless. Um, props for bringing the Dunsparce. <laughs> As I brought the Pikachu, we both brought our memes, which is pretty cool. But that'll be it for week two. We are 2-0, rocking a plus seven differential. Not even bad. And next week, I am not sure who we'll be taking on, but I will make sure to see you there. So sub, like, share, deuces.